Big distractions now. She's getting more comfortable with this environment and thinking, maybe I should check stuff out. This is where we may move into that stimulation. Um, ah, ah, kennel, good. She came off, nick, nick, vibrate. She went back on, shuts off here. All right, everybody, we are here for another video with Miss Shock. And like I said, we're going to move into a level of higher distraction as well as generalize this behavior by moving it to new environments, right? You may be thinking, right, it's just a front porch. We were inside. Not that big a difference. There's a huge difference. Dogs are placed and situationally oriented, and we need to be able to help her to understand that this means the same thing in all of these environments. In the beginning stages, this is going to take a little bit of training. In the end stages, it's going to make it pretty easy to move from one area to the next area because we're generalizing like this now. We have distractions outside. There's people working. If it becomes too big of a distraction for her, we'll adjust the session, making sure that we're helping her and being realistic about what our goals are with the training session. We were set up for this and then unexpectedly something came, but I still want to try and work through this. If she can do it, it'll be really good for her. If she can't, we'll show you what that looks like too. What we're going to be doing is collar conditioning to a place board, and then we're going to actually utilize more than one board. As soon as we get started here, we're using Vibrate, and today I have an MR1100. It's a great unit for young dogs, and I use it a lot when we're developing puppies. Ready, Shock? Hey, pull a little focus here. She was thinking out there, and then I'm going to go ahead and release her. Good. And we're going to start this process, okay? Right away, she's comfortable getting up on a dog bed. We've been putting a lot of work on that. Hey. Good, come on, come with me. Okay, shock. Okay, good girl. So what we wanna be able to do is utilize collar conditioning to send her to that dog bed. You can see already that she's got a good idea of what the behavior is, but, and is understanding that this is a good place to be. We've done a fair amount of work with this and this is showing really good stuff already, but what we need to be able to do is start asking her for the behaviors. Hey, okay, good. All right, I've got the collar on now. Kennel. Good. That little. Good. That's fine. Right now we're just working on going to the bed. But that little. I'm going to make a note of that. I turned the collar on, but I tried to pull her focus back to me. It was just a little additional. Hey, 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 you can do whatever. Pull focus before I'm actually asking for the cue. She's distracted. We can see that. Good. Collar's on, kennel, good girl. When she's focused more on me, focused more in the direction, she makes that easier. Now we're gonna start asking just a smidge more. Um, I'm going to keep, hold her accountable essentially for staying on the bed, even if I leave. This is also, I wanna point out a big difference from what we've had before. The bed's been against a wall. This, she can essentially get off in 360 degrees. That's a bigger challenge than just having the three directions to get off, blocking more than 25% of her quote unquote escape routes. You can see how powerful this is becoming and a dog that's comfortable getting on a dog bed, laying down and relaxing is going to be the dog that's better at calming down and this can be applied to a lot of situations in life. Good, okay, come on. We'll come this way, good girl, okay. We wanna go to the dog bed, I'm gonna talk about this. We're gonna go to the dog bed to release them, okay, good. The reason for that specifically is so that she's not anticipating that in general conversation, kind of like what happened earlier. I was talking about, I said something this sort of the K word, right? And she ran into the crate. That was in the last video. If you didn't see that, go back and watch it. She's picking up on the words that we're saying because we don't say a lot to her. And when we do say things to her, it means something. The words themselves, the cues are fairly powerful and that's the way we want them to stay. Good. Okay, release her from the bed. And then once we get up here again, good. Good girl, we'll pull focus this way. Collar turns on now, kennel, good. We are working on one behavior. I'm not collar conditioning her to come back to me at this point. I'm not working on recalls with the collar. I'm strictly working on place training. The next step or soon after this, we'll start to incorporate all of the things into one session, which really helps differentiating between cues with collar conditioning. All of these things have to be built up on. It's not a one and done kind of thing. Good, okay, 
Come in. Good girl. We're going to turn the collar on again. Kennel. Good. You can see, guys, that this seems almost a little bit too easy. That's because of the groundwork. Uh uh uh. Collar's on. Big distractions now. She's getting more comfortable with this environment and thinking maybe I should check stuff out. This is where we may move into that stimulation. Um, ah, ah, kennel, good. She came off, nick, nick, vibrate. She went back on, shuts off here. Now she's gonna see less test. Next thing we're gonna move to is a new bed. Good, okay, come in. Good job. We're gonna get this out of the way. I'm gonna set it up here. I'm gonna pull down the next here. These are the climb stands that we taught her before. We're not teaching a new platform out here. We're utilizing ones that we've already taught her. Whoop. Hey, kennel, good. Kennel, good girl, good job. She's like, I just wanna lay down. This is also something that we need to pay attention to. We're doing this session outside. It is the summer, folks, and she's getting warm. Um, I'm gonna do a couple more reps only and then we're going to call this a wrap. I wanna see just a couple more repetitions to show you. Okay, good. She comes off of that easier because it's smaller and it's easier for her to get off of it. That slightly bigger bed, she's like, ah, I wanna kinda of stay on there. Okay, vibrate is on. Kennel. Distractions, right? So we're gonna to go to stimulation. Kennel, good. No, kennel, no. Good. So the sequence there, she went, she was distracted, nick, nick, nick on the collar. You're going to utilize as many as you need or the right level to pull focus. I felt like we had focus. I hit vibrate, sent her back there. We're going to go ahead and do another one. Okay. Just working through each here. Vibrate's on now. Kennel. Nope. Kennel. Good. I don't recommend repeating the cue on a regular basis. No. Good. She came off. She felt one nick on stimulation. And then I saw her instantly turn. We hit vibrate and ran that until she got back on the dog bed or the platform here in this case. Don't use the cue over and over and over again. You don't want to say kennel, 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 kennel. The more you talk, the less they listen. But at the same time, we need to apply the cue when the dog is actually focused and, and interacting with the situation. They are attentive to what we're saying. And if they're not, they probably didn't even hear or didn't recognize. So that's why you hear me say it again. The first time I said it, she got distracted into something else. When I pulled focus back to the task at hand, then I ask again, kennel, and then she's getting back on the bed. Does that make sense? I hope it does. If it doesn't, throw it in the comments below. We can discuss more about your specific situation or what you think we could do differently. All right. I'm the guy with the pink gun. We're going to end this session for shock because it is warm. And we will see you guys in the next video.